So you, you've worked in Somalia, Iraq, Lebanon, all, all these kind of um, crisis places. Um, mm. uh, I guess, you, would you see yourself as an internationalist or, you know, someone that wants New Zealand to be more sort of outward looking or, or do you think New Zealand already does that? Oh, no, I don't. And I, but I, I, but I very, very, feel very strongly about is that um, New Zealand um, and New Zealanders have a, have a, have a, rep, a great reputation around the mm. world. And we, have a, and we have, and we should have more, a reputation for being independent. And I don't have, a, I, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that Helen Clark would not have got the job in the UNDP if we had gone into Iraq, for example. Right. I mean, if we had uh, sided with that coalition. Okay. So I, I actually think that we could be, we, we can be way more independent. It gives us more credibility. I mean, one thing that is very underplayed is, um, and, under, and I don't think um, uh, people don't appreciate quite as much as they, is, in New Zealand, um, is the role of our armed forces and the way that the, the, the job that they do. Right. If you go anywhere where New Zealand is around, I'm not talking about the SAS so much here, but I mean the armed forces, but I remember in um, Rwanda, for example, when I was there, we had a C-130. And the word got around the, the UN community, um, mate, if you want to you get anywhere, go and see the New Zealanders. The Americans had four C-130s, we had one, and we were doing right. as much as... So and it was just that sort of, yeah, sure, we can help. I mean, what do you, what do you want us to do? That, that kind of roll your sleeves up and get but on with But militarily, things. we are still aligned with certain nations. Would you prefer that we be, uh, say, unaligned? Um, well, I, I think that, that alignment is, is, is loosened over the mm. years, and I don't think there's any real need to, to, to go back to the old world. I mean, I think, I mean, obviously we have tradition on allies that we mm. you don't, you know, don't kick sand in their face sort of thing, but at the same time, I actually do think that we... That we uh, that we have a we have a real role as a kind of an independent an independent voice and you know if the, for example um, I was we there was a vote on UNESCO the other mm, day and yeah. with the Palestinians and I think we abstained Stained, yeah and I thought well why why abstain well, I mean this is a group of people that have been occupied yeah. since 1967 they want to join an organisation. And how is that going to threaten the peace process in the Middle East? Okay. I mean, why so, can't we vote for that? So the rest of the world would have sort of, you know. So yeah, you've obviously got you know, a lot of uh, background in this area. So uh, uh, this, we could talk about this for hours, but very briefly, <laughs> um, what's your proposal for the for peace in the Middle East in um, <laughs> Israel and Palestine? Um, well, you're right. We could talk for hours. Yeah, um, well, do you yeah. think it should be a, a, a two-state solution or a one-state solution? What's um, well, I was there for four and a half years. Yeah. Um, I think that the, 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 the gap or the space for a two-state solution is running out fast. Mm. Um, you've only got three alternatives, really. You've got a two-state solution in which you have a coherent mm. Palestinian entity, um, and, that, and at the moment you have Gaza and the West mm. Bank, and, no, no, and you've got 500,000 settlers living in the West Bank alongside Palestinians. So, so surely know. the one-state solution is really the only thing so, to offer. So then you've got, a, you've got the other one, which is kind of the the other solution or is moving a lot of Palestinians into Jordan, which, mm. you know, there are, I, I, the, the figures in, in Israel are, I, I, it's, are quite astonishing of the number of people who actually think that would be a good idea. Oh. And then the third uh, uh, is, is, as you say, the one-state solution. And the longer we, the, the two-state solution gets pushed aside and gets compromised, as it is, and basically it's sabotaged in a way, mm. then the closer you get to a, ultimately to one state. It's, it's not in anybody's um, kind of imagination at the moment. But then, you know, in the 1980s, South Africa, South Africa wasn't yeah. either. You know, well, the, you know, the Cold War wasn't about, to, the Berlin Wall wasn't about to fall down. Things happen and things change. That's right. Um, so on this UNESCO question, so a Labour government would have voted in favour of... Well, I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't say. I mean, if, if, it had been, if it had been my recommendation, I would have said, yeah, of course, why not? Um, and, you know, the, the re what was the retaliation? US cuts off $70 million. The Israelis decide that they're going to build 2,000 more settlements mm. in, inside the occupied territory against the international law. For that, you know, for you guys going to UNESCO, we're going to break international law even more than we used to uh, by building more settlements. Well, you know, I, as a result of that, I, my, my feeling about where we should have voted was even doubly um, reinforced by by doing, uh, by, by, not, by not, okay. not abstaining and actually voting for okay. it. What, what about on uh, foreign aid spending? Do we spend enough? And how much would Labor spend? 
Um, well, we, we, during the Labour government, it, it edged up. Yeah. Um, and but still I think, way below what you know, the international targets are. Yeah, um, and, I, and I think that's what we did do, and I had a role in it, was actually making our... Um, and I wouldn't have, in the, in, the early, in the early 2000s, I certainly wouldn't have necessarily advocated for a lot more spending the way that we were spending it, which was... Um, but we were spending it much more wisely than we did as a result of actually professionalising our aid uh, department. Um, so I think, and we made it a greater focus on um, the Pacific, yeah, the Pacific and Southeast Asia, and to degree some multilateral initiatives as well, which I thought was was good in the sense of playing our role as well. So yeah, I'm not aware of the Labour Party's manifesto at the moment, but um, what but, I, but the, 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 the aspiration is is to is to is to is to yeah. increase yeah. the. I idea. guess I'm always a bit cynical about this word aspiration in policy <laughs> documents. Um, but it's a national word, actually, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, you know, a word that national has used. There's nothing yeah, wrong yeah. with being. <laughs> so I mean, when would a Labour government actually, you know, finally meet that target of zero what zero point seven percent of GDP? Seven, yeah, zero point seven percent of GDP. Which I mean, I, you know. I, I, I couldn't put a date on it, but I mean, I think what you'd try and do is to, and it's very interesting that even when, with David Cameron and the changes that are happening in the UK, mm -hmm. um, he what he has done is actually made sure there's a lot of being cuts everywhere, but yeah. their, their aid um, budget actually has actually that's been ring fenced yes, quite successfully. Yeah, 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 which is very interesting. Okay, what about immigration? Do we have enough immigrants then? Um, it strikes me that we're still kind of a fortress New Zealand in terms of immigration, and Labour and National don't seem very different on immigration. Yeah, I think, look, I, I, I guess I'm in, in, in some ways my, my feeling on immigration is it, there's, there's not a lot of point in bringing people in here that would end up costing us an enormous amount of money. Well, we, we, have a, we have a refugee obligation, yeah. um, and there's not actually too many countries that live up to that obligation, actually. Um, but we. But we, we don't look at, I don't think we look perhaps creatively enough at, you know... Um, but surely, surely we... At what we need in the country. W New Zealand benefits hugely from immigration. It does. And I mean, you know, look, you're, you're aware in the sort of the university context. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if somebody has gone through and done a PhD here in New yeah. Zealand from, I don't know, from China or whatever, um, we know what they like. Mm. We know that they understand New Zealand. We know mm. that they speak, obviously, reasonable English. We know that they've got context. We know that they've got language skills. So why, you know, that would seem to me to be the perfect um, sort of immigrant to come to New Zealand, particularly if they're working in an area that we would... So I, it, it, or you, could, you could almost extend an automatic work permit or a, to, to somebody who was coming through to, to do that once, if, if they were sort of proven themselves. This is something that um, others have actually raised as well is, is we've got a fantastic international education program mm. are we you know are we, have we got that link to our immigration policy sufficiently i'm, I'm throwing this out as a because i'm actually not sure what the, yeah, yeah, our sure. policy is so, so i'm you know i'm shooting from the hip there but uh but i do i do think that that seems to be a, a smarter way than trying to kind of vet people before they come in and find out that they perhaps right. not the people we want um, there's a question on the on the on Twitter about immigration. It says, "Could Labor Labor work with Winston again, given his terrible immigration policies?" Um, I think you know, working with Winston's a, a big a big subject. I mean, I I, I think, um, and I wasn't here. I was away for a period of this time. But I think that uh, Winston, as a foreign minister, was a whole lot better than than, than people thought. And, um, and and actually, as, it, as it turned out, he was at, he was actually had some skills, his personal skills. And, and foreign minister, so much of it is actually inter, interpersonal skills. If you can get on with somebody, and be able to pick up the phone and ring Condoleezza Rice or whatever is you know, um, then it's a it's a it's a fantastic asset to have. So it's, it's a lot of about personal skills. I know in the UN that getting on in the in, in with the diplomatic mm. community because I had to was all about my relationship with, um, with people rather than necessarily policies and things like that. Yeah. OK. Now, students are quite interested in social issues and sort of moral questions. Yeah. So, you know, there's a few questions we normally ask the participants here, such as gay marriage, for or against? Uh, for, yeah. OK. Um, purchase age for alcohol, should it be 18 or um, raised? I've, I've sort of split my ways on this. I mean, I, I have to say I... I've, I've, I've vacillated a bit with this, but I actually I think splitting the age of 18 in, a, in an establishment and 20 on in a, um, which then, which means 
you know, I'm, I'm perhaps on the fence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but because uh, obviously there's a lot of students that will be um, would be unimpressed with being told they can't buy alcohol anymore to have you know, yeah. parties in their flats. I, it's always hard to sort of say, okay, well you can't have that, and you, and you always had it. I mean, I I guess when I was a student, I was 20, so um, and the, and the um, so I, I I guess. I guess it has to be, and I also don't think you can see that in, 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 uh, in isolation to a lot of the other issues around alcohol purchase. I mean, I, time of opening, number of outlets that are, you know, all, all, of, the, all of those things I think is, is, is are important as well. And you might, f you're I think I, I, try, um, I mean, there is no doubt in my, in my electorate we have a, a drinking problem in, in a couple of our, in, in our shopping centres. Sure. Because there's a number of outlets open really late. And, and there's just no way of being able to, to control that. So properly. you personally favour tightening up a bit on yeah, uh, I think regulation? So. Yeah, I think okay. a more, more, more community input, which generally means more restrictive, but, but nevertheless, it's, um, I think that's, you know, the community has... Uh, well, John Minto was here last week and he was suggesting that the community should have a lot more input and should have the chance to vote on, I guess, reducing the number of outlets. At, uh, I, I think, yeah, I, I agree with him. I actually think that that's, um, he lives in my electorate. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but yeah, I, I, um, I, I agree with him. I think that that, that would be a, uh, I think, look, I just think it's one of those things that affect people a lot. Yeah. So therefore, why shouldn't they have more say in, in okay. what, what happens? And he extended that same sort of argument to pokey machines. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of pokey machines. I actually think the sinking lid on pokey machines is a, is a great... I mean, if, I, if, they, if they disappeared completely or in, in, in most places other than, you know, a, a few places, I wouldn't have too many sleepless nights, frankly. And yeah. the, community, the idea of the community having a referendum on them or something you'd be open to? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I think that that's where the community would go anyway. But, mm. I mean, there, there is obviously some benefits because there's a, there's a big kind of a refund back to community projects. But yeah. unfortunately, the people that I see in front of the poking machines are the people in the sense mm. that it's going back to help. Mm. But this is also dangerous territory, isn't it, for Labour, with this nanny state sort of um, I, um, no, term thrown around well, at you, yeah, um, I, I guess that you might ban something I, else? Or? Yeah, I, look, I, to be honest with you, I think that um, if people have the choice, then they create their own nanny state, you know. Um, so I, 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 I like the idea of, of people having a bigger say in pokey machines or alcohol outlets and a whole bunch of different things like that. Okay. I actually think they make quite good decisions, people, generally. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> okay. What about this upcoming election? Though? Yeah, what about this upcoming election? <laughs> Listen, whatever happens, the, the people will have spoken and I mean, you know, this is, a, this is old, to, well, they, they didn't vote the right, right way. Well, actually, no. That's just the, the, it's like the, the voter is always right. Uh, yeah. <laughs>